Hello, Ruth. Do no. I know? Do I know you, Ruth? Oh uh, no, not really. <laughs> okay, well, no. I'm Jeremy. I'm in uh, California, Santa Cruz area. Where are you joining us from? From Bolivia, South America. Excellent. All right. Were you planning on attending this event in person? Um, I hope yes. If it is possible, yes. But meanwhile, online. All right. Oh, we got uh, uh, Abito. Is that how I pronounce your name? Marco? Beto. 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 Yeah. Hey there. And uh, Divya, is that how I pronounce your name? Uh, Divya. Divya. Yeah. Okay, well, welcome all. Uh, we have Tyler with us as well. Um, so my name is, is Jeremy and I'm going to be, uh, I'll just go ahead and start then. Um, oh, actually, let's see. I want to record a copy of this local to myself. There we go. So, uh, thank you, Tyler, uh, for setting this up and monitoring it as we go along. Uh, mm -hmm. feel free to participate if any of this, uh, grabs your interest as well. Okay. Great. So I'm in the back background, just helping if you need help. Cool. So um, I'm going to introduce myself and kind of give you the uh, uh, my thoughts coming into this. Um, so there's a, a, I'm going to introduce myself in terms of a this. There's a term that I might be using later called an anomaly, and oh, I didn't bring the book with me. Um, I, I'm it's there's this is sort of the uh, the latest version of something that's been on my mind for maybe about 20 years. And so it's, uh, you know, like a, a, an inquiry that I've been in. And uh, originally when I was plant when I wrote up the description for this, I thought I was uh, going to present some some new material of mine around looking at um, the artificial general intelligence alignment issues. Um, I'm a participant in a local community here, uh, well, it, it, in California, but uh, there's been a lot of uh, webcasts uh, from the Foresight Institute. And this past week has been really uh, exciting because there's some people coming out of the woodwork, uh, a fellow named Forrest Landry who shared how uh, sort of an argument that's, you know, for the impossibility of, you know, ultimate alignment uh, and coexistence of sort of what what this whole engineering project around of you know creating artificial intelligence that is uh, has reached and exceeded uh, human human abilities. So um, that is something, and I, I say this in my uh, uh, description that th that's not the future I'm I'm here for. And and actually, what I'll be presenting to you, I think, is a, a very plausible alternative that uh, has all the upsides and none of the downsides. Um, so I'm going to begin here. Sure. Okay. Hang tight. I'm going to share my screen. There we go. I was practicing this by myself. Okay. So this is, uh, you know, this is my overall context for uh, the, the planetary situation. The biggest challenge humanity faces is each other. Um, and this is distinct from technical challenges. I mean, there's a way in which, you know, uh, we have like all the relevant information on how to do most anything is out there. But in terms of getting the alignment and the cooperation, uh, there's, this is what I think is, missing is that sort of cooperation and I'm going to say ultimately communication. I'm wondering if anyone has any immediate reactions to that, please chime in and let me know. Because uh, my intention, given that we're such a small group, is if we can, uh, you know, if, if you're, uh, you've got, you know, like that doesn't sit right with you or whatever it is, uh, if we if we go if we have an exchange over that, I think it'll get much more real in terms of what it is that I'm here to contribute. So I'll keep going in the meantime. So 
yes, I was originally saying here, oh, and this is where I need to like minimize my, whoops. Okay, so uh, I was going to be presenting on uh, sort of issues around the AGI alignment issue. Uh, so for me, the, the I, I'm saying it's actually the an instance of a, the same class of problems that I think that we've seen in politics, in interpersonal relationships. It's this alignment issue of like, well, I, how do we get along in some sense? It's a problem of other minds. And, you know, philosophically, the problem of, of other minds will know it as like, oh, solipsism and so forth. Like, how do you actually, you know, there's all these questions about, and it's really, I think, fundamentally questions about communication. So this, so I'm asserting that the fundamental issue persists that, and it's unaddressed. And so that's what we're going to be looking at today. So love this quote. The biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. So I'm going to give you two, two anecdotes uh, where I see that so structurally humanity, we've sort of, uh, the, in these two anecdotes, we've bumped, bumped up against um, dealing with this, this fact that so often the way that what I'm calling the unworkability of our communication is that oftentimes it just goes to noise, right? So you, you get too, too many views, you know, there's not that pre-existing, you know, agreement about what's there and people will disagree. So this, the first time here, uh, this, was, this, was, this is from a video, uh, the Hypothesis Web Annotation Project put together this introductory video. And, and I'm gonna use that because uh, there's, there's things around the, the technical aspects of this that I, that I, I might end up discussing with you. But uh, the, this, this uh, intro animation to what their project is, they start with, um, you know, the invention of, of language and then, you know, writing it down and then the printing press. And then we got to the World Wide Web. And, and at the last second here, and this is in 1993, Mosaic, this is uh, Mark Andreessen and Eric Bina putting this together. They, they rolled out a feature and you can go see the email or like, we're, look, we're looking for guinea pigs to test this. And what it is, is uh, group annotation. And and, and in terms of the, uh, the introduction to the hypothesis project, this is sort of like this, you know, the, this building and building, building, and then boom, you know, they, they shut it down. And so then the video goes on to say, in the next 20 years, people try to put this thing in place. And it's my assertion that it's actually a structural issue with the World Wide Web. And, and uh, when I was looking at this recently, I noticed, oh, so here we have this, uh, what the, what the uh, picture is in the background is the, uh, the ARPANET. This is, and it dates uh, 1988. We're, we're not seeing this because we have the little, my screen grab uh, has the window over this. But uh, so it's this issue of, um, and it gets into all sorts of, you know, game theoretic stuff, I, I assume. Uh, so here they are making an annotation that is public, public in the same way that the web page is. Uh, and so, you know, that, that's, that's great. And yet here they are, there, there's sort of a pervertive in, incentive going on with this sort of structure of annotation on the web. And I, I, I'm calling this, why focus on the content of my website when I can just post to every other page's conversation about the thing that I'm about. And this is sort of what happened. This, uh, this is, that's the, uh, the vector of, of uh, spam emails. You know, there's, there's like no cost to getting that out there. And they're showing up everywhere and so forth. And you know, thankfully, there's some interventions against that. But setting that aside, so here, 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 they're essentially spamming the uh, ARPANET page with the mosaic is awesome. But you know, that that's not the intention. So I'm I'm saying that the issue is with the World Wide Web as it is. Uh, and so, uh, so b basically, I see in this this card catalog here is is there because. Uh, the web does a very good job of essentially, uh, you know, ele elect automating or, uh, you know, uh, electrolyzing. <laughs> I'm just going to go with that. Uh, the same old familiar processes. And, uh, and I, I, I think of this fairly, fairly clearly in terms of, so the domain name system, that's like the top level organization of, uh, of how 
how users interact with the web as it was originally designed. Uh, and this has changed some since then with the silos of information and so forth. But the domain name system is analogous to street addresses. And so this is a way uh, in terms of for, uh, you know, I can put what I want in my book and can put what I want in my website. And, you know, with my website, maybe I'll have, you know, a comments area or, you know, if I'm running a business, you can, you can, you can drink your coffee here, but, you know, it's my property and I'm going to ask you to leave. Uh, so, so there's, there's opportunities for feedback and so forth, but in terms of having that be a scalable thing, uh, you know, like, like YouTube comments and, and what we're seeing here, uh, the, the, my assertion, and, and this is where, you know, I think the charge against, uh, you know, them shutting it down uh, in this um, hypothesis video, it's just, well, what were they, they were trying to do something new, and it's really running a group annotation server was outside the scope of, of the product that they're uh, providing, and uh, I've, 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 you know, young kid at this age, uh, 93, but I, I agree with um, some observations about this, where the, the web took off in large part, thanks to the assistance of the graphical browser. That made a big difference to have the inline images and everything work like that, which then had, I think that made the tipping point because this was not the first hypertext project. So this is an image uh, in terms of kind of giving you the bigger picture. Um, and this is very metaphorical, but uh, so this, we have, a, I, I, I perceive this while, while kind of ruminating on this, what we see is this highway. And in some sense, this highway is communication and it's, and it's heading into this mountain. And so, and I would even chart the same sort of milestones along, if, if, you know, written, uh, the written word after the advent of language and so forth. And so it's, it's my assertion that the web in terms of the issue being is that it's a continuation of broadcasting there it does allow for um you know and even with radio for example as an example of broadcasting people can call in and so forth but in terms of what's possible and i think what's missing as a, as a civilization which we'll get further into is a paradigm shift and so for me i'm i'm, I'm thinking of this as where we step off the linear what's to be expected and, uh, and to be developed. And my assertion is that that whole is actually, uh, is the, uh, a very strong avoidance of this communication uh, that, that I'm saying that, that uh, is, is missing. Um, and so what I'm imagining uh, just in a kind of metaphorical sense is, you know, pulling over when we're coming up to that mountain and then what's, what's actually needed is the creation of something else entirely which is we're, we're leaving the paved path and starting to navigate our way up a hill into unknown terrain. And, and the name of the game there is conversation, is feedback, is, is dialogue, is discovering uh, something beyond what we already know. So uh, one of the, the one of the signs uh, for entering this tunnel, I think, is the page rank algorithm. So uh, this this is really uh, so. If you're not familiar with it, what 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 sort of this was the canonical breakthrough of Larry Page and Sergey Brin when they're um, at. Wait, let me check something. Forget it. Um, at Stanford, and uh, they embark on. You know what? What can, what do we do? What can? What's possible if we can put the whole web in our pocket? I think that was the name of their original research paper. And so, what they're looking at is the emergent structure of how people are commenting and relating to each other here. And so, uh, a page's rank is not just about the number of links, but you know who is linking. And so, this this uh, this red uh, face off to the right. The, the biggest, that's the only referent of the point that most everyone else is linking to. You know, the big yellow guy is getting the, it has the most reputation here. Um, and so, and ju just within this, this particular idea, uh, I, I, I read that there was two, there was two other instances where people had this insight and it, and it goes back to, um, you know, uh, 
quotations in scientific papers, references. So this is really the, the area that I think technically what there was to do when we when we sort of reach this this insight of oh we're just uh, making ever, ever faster this broadcasting sort of uh, mode of, of dealing with information what what happens if we look at what like what are these structures generating and uh, in a way this is so I mean this might be radical uh, radical pay drink you know there's uh, taking a look at what the generative functions are of the systems that we're in and and tweaking that and then uh, that that's giving people a new context to interact in. So that's that's what I'm going to be showing you later. So uh, when I'm talking about something, this is this the real hypertext? Now this is the real hypertext. So uh, this this is Ted Nelson, and in the background there on his monitor, you'll see uh, his um, visual visually connected documents. Uh, so, so why I th I think of this as hypertext in more than just name only um, is that the, there ha it has this sense of hyperspace. Um, there's there is no domain name system in uh, necessarily in this setup. Um, everything is quotable, and 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 we're gonna I'm just gonna skip ahead into really the insight uh, of what's possible um what's possible when we leave the printed page there, there's a there's a way in which um uh following the web browser and the the, the palo alto kind of graphical interface they were looking at you know what you see is what you get and so so uh, desktop publishing and that kind of graphic design of i have it on the screen this way and here it comes out well ted was interested in what could what couldn't you actually print out and that's because these are structures that exist in in a hi hyper hyperspace hyper situational superposition in relation to each other and so uh this this <laughs> through this little quote in here uh one of the uh close collaborators of the radical exchange movement is uh jaron lanier and he spent this is like a 400 page book uh popularizing the the half century old idea and this is the half century old idea on which uh the conversations around data dignity are taking place and i'm just going to pause here for a moment and say that um really you're 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 i do invite you to interact uh, and it, and it kind of gives me something to push against so i know how i'm landing so that that would also be a service to me beto you just anyway, I invite you to interrupt when you want to. Um, so I'm saying that that the uh, the mechanics of Ted calls it transclusion. Um, Jaron doesn't actually use that term, but it, it's at first it's uh, so I'm going to give you the uh, explanation of that because I'm not hearing anyone say that they know what I'm talking about. Um, so suppose uh, Beto and myself were in the same field and I want to quote something that he's written. Now, given that our, our computers are on a network, um, his document isn't actually, you know, disconnected from mine in the sense of how things can be connected. And uh, I don't actually need to copy a quote of his that I want to use in my paper. I can actually select that from his source and, you know, trans include, transclusion, transclude this into my essay. So what's actually going on, if you're reading my work right now, uh, is that, you know, I've got what I've written and so forth. And then every time that I'm quoting someone, uh, it, that that uh, that text is actually being taken from their original source. It's not a copy. It's not a duplicate. And Jaron does a very good job of of going way into this. And this is actually his essay, or this book. It's a full book. Is an economic argument, and it gets back to this uh, this the original context for my uh, 
my presentation here, which is uh, artificial intelligence and so forth. So what he's saying is actually his book, this came out in uh, seven years ago now. And in a sense, he's writing it uh, to, to look at how do we have a democracy which entails having a strong middle class. These are people who can who are participating in public processes and so forth. They're not just struggling for survival. But so, so how do we have uh, a democracy which requires, in some sense, an economics at work? How do we have this even while more and more of uh, work is being automated uh, in software and then more and more done by machine learning algorithms? And so, you know what, I see a two on, on the more here. And it's funny, when I'm doing full screen, I can't. Okay, here we go, chat. Oh, there are chats. Ah, okay. Thank you, Beto. Um, I'm gonna try to leave this chat thing open so I can grab that when need be. Um, there we go. Um, uh, I, I, th I think in some sense, maybe, uh, and if you, I don't, I'm not familiar with RSS trackbacks, but my, my guess is, is that there, there's, there's, it, so another, another part of this, here we go, where was I, um, is that there, this, this, the, the sort of framework that, uh, it, well, it was called the Xanadu project. Um, or Project Xanadu that uh, Ted Nelson was working on. Uh, it, it's actually uh, secure. So like I, the, 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 the means to actually copy things wholesale, and this, this I'll, my, 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 I might touch on this later, but the, um, there's, there's some sense in which all this is, you, you, you could think of it as a revolution in bookkeeping. So uh, Lanier says that information is just alienated experience. So all this information that is uh, so valuable to the machine learning algorithms is being generated by people uh, in some sense or another. And if they were getting paid for that, uh, then this is this is the uh, the scenario where we we could have you know a. a a new economy in, in, in some sense, this is uh, very much a, uh, yeah, a, a more modern economy because, you know, the, 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 you know, the creative works of our minds are valuable and, and he, he, he's got a lengthy, uh, lengthy look at how um, there's sort of a superstar economy now online and, you know, and, and, and being advertised, supported, uh, this 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 whole thing that he's discussing, and this is what had um, Ted were Ted actually Ted's coming from a line of self-published authors, and so people getting paid. I was actually talking to him about this once, and I, I didn't get this aspect of it. And he said, "So that they get paid too." And and it, I was like, "Oh, okay, if that makes then hence hence this whole economic argument coming from Lanier." So, uh, quote that I like the huge collective task of finding a way, finding the best future for digital networking will probably turn out to be, be like finding our way back to approximately where Ted was in the beginning. Okay. So uh, he, um, this is a great piece if you haven't seen it. Uh, I'm glad that his work is being popularized. And so um, let's see. Hmm. The um, this picture here, uh, I'm 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 asserting that what is available up that mountain is something that has been called top site. And you know what? I unfortunately I can't see my cursor when. Okay, I assume that's you're now you're seeing it, you're now seeing everything. Um, Can I do this a little differently? No. Ah. Okay. I'm gonna go unofficial here. Um, this is one of these emergent uh, properties of a system 
that is has a different generating function. And so uh, unfortunately, all this page rank stuff has um, it, it's in some sense privatizing the it, they they found a way to to scrape the public goods of the sort of collective intelligence coming from uh, people's linking to each other and and now they've got a tighter loop with uh, all Google's other services as well and so um, I'm going to transition back to the main issue here because in that process of of top site I I'm actually have that assertion of dealing with communication and uh, what I'm about to lay out here goes a long ways toward, I, I see it as fulfilling on transforming communication on the planet and in such a way that it even, uh, that the whole economic activity is inside of, of a context of, you know, actually human planning. So hang on one second. Okay, so now this question, now that this question here is that, that AGI alignment problem. So I'm saying that communication has already been solved and that's, that's you know, human communication. And this is, this is uh, so this here is Marshall Rosenberg. Uh, he was trained as a um, clinical psychiatrist and he actually, towards the end of that, he got the limitations of that and then sort of went rogue from, uh, from maybe the standard career path and uh, did work uh, with, well, actually all sorts of uh, mediation, uh, street gangs, uh, um, a lot of stuff with schools, but really uh, looking at what he was committed to, uh, he he created this thing. He originated what's called nonviolent communication, and this was the first sort of um, uh, gift that I got in this life. You know, inside of that inquiry of um, you know how's this going to work out? Because I, I'd actually um, oh yeah. So so this was this is my anomaly. I, I was I I was reading about the future of technology. Uh, around the time I was 18 and so forth. And I was, I remember actually leaving my first job and, and uh, kind of having a debrief with my, my employer and telling about, telling him about this post scarcity uh, future of abundance that I was looking forward to. And about a year after that, I, the, the other shoe dropped and I got a sense of, um, and I put this in my bio, uh, I got a sense of what wasn't working in the world and uh, in terms of abuses of power and so forth. And um, so what, I'll, I'll, I'm just gonna relay this, I have it on the next slide, but um, I was listening to a podcast where Marshall said, conflict only, he was being interviewed. He says, conflict exists only at the level of strategy. And, and meanwhile, human beings, we all have the same needs. And without making this distinction, I'm going to hang on to the strategy because that's like, that's the tangible thing. I'm going to hang on to the strategy as if it's the need. And then when the strategies that we have, you know, these are the particular actions that we're taking to meet that underlying thing, the need, the value, there's all sorts of different language for it. Um, but when, when, when I'm in conflict with you at the level of strategy and I'm not, and I, I mistake that for my need, you will like, occur for me i'll be like i'll have the experience that you are my enemy because after all in my book you're against that need which is because i've completed it with the strategy and so forth so um so this this notion of enemy images and that really grabbed me and at that moment the sort of the, the clouds parted and i realized wow like like there are no enemies there's just ways of thinking that that leave us believing that and in some sense that we're separate Right. And so, so this, this mode of inquiry about, wow, like, what is this person feeling? And then that feeling that's coming from what, what they're needing. 
and so this is a this is this this attention and this for me this this these are all um, ways to look at and, and get aware of how am I listening to this person. So to me, uh, and I'm not sure I have this in here, but um, yeah, for me, listening is the cutting edge skill of our humanity, and that, that and it unfortunately. The, the the truth of this is sort of hiding in plain sight because you know after all we hear and we think we're hearing what's what's real in some sense it all just seems objective and so forth but that that availability of our shared common humanity underneath all this conflict this is this is why i'm calling it the cutting edge skill of our humanity and it's it's what i'm here to uh, popularize how do we in, like institutionalize it in some sense to scale it up because uh well, I'll, I'll continue here so so from from the from that place of what's possible in communication i say that any conflict can be resolved by being in communication and on the flip side of that any future created and uh and i i put this extra slide in here a note for pessimists um now uh, a lot of people have had experiences where like you know communication did not work and you know i'm 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 sorry to hear that but it's like part of the human experience isn't it and and they walk away from that having a dim view of what's possible in communication and so th there's I'll, I'll put this the other way let's, let's see if i can see my can't see my speaker notes here um to, to look at it for, you know for a pessimist to understand this assertion here um so if if there if there really are people that you know that are just really so stuck in the way that they are and we can't communicate with them because you know and it won't do any good or whatever and and even if you try um that they're the game that they're playing i'll just put it that way the game that they're playing depends in some sense on uh them doing that hidden from the view of 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 most people or at least you know th th there's 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 a way in which uh i can get in communication with other people and constrain the action of the of the bad per and i don't believe in good or bad people but the person who the person if for whatever whatever they well, so and then this is where that empathy what are they feeling what are they needing comes into place i can actually hear what someone's saying they're, they're going to talk about their strategy and I can put my attention on, you know, what's alive for them, you know, what need of theirs is up, and I can just guess. And this was something that uh, actually listening to the process of uh, people practice and and to practice NBC, just getting that it's all it's like guessing. And so empathy is not what I say; it's where I put my attention. So, uh, and and this is a side note here about uh, this practice of NBC or nonviolent communication and the speaking and listening part of it. Um, I would expect that, that if I'm talking about the strategy and then someone refers to my need and but I'm but I'm talking about the strategy, I, I would really notice the difference. And I go, look, no, I'm actually talking about them and so forth. But more often than not, what my experiences is I'll start reflecting back what I intuit, like guessing, is this your experience? Is this what's important to you? And people will agree, like they'll like, they'll, they'll, you know, in some sense they're, this is diffusing the conflict uh, or whatever it is. But um, it, it just, it's, an, it's notable to me that, that you can kind of, that in my experiences that I'm like redirecting them to our shared humanity. Uh, and away from the the particular stimulus or the the, the that sort of strict strategy level conflict, and then back down to something below. So, um, back 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 to the <laughs> back from that side into the previous side note. Yeah, I mean, I, I um, and, and this is where I'd love to hear. You know, do do are you thinking that you might have a dim view of possible, uh, dim view of what's possible in communication? I mean, are there certain people that, you know, you just can't deal with, you know, and so that's, <laughs> feel free to inquire with me. So, um, oh, I don't have this in here. Um, there is, so, 
as soon as I go full screen, I can't see my. Um, so are you seeing my my screen right now? Let's see. Yes, you are. Thank you for I'm, I'm seeing your thumb. Um, <laughs> I wanted to get a uh, picture of it. So there's there's this thing called a Tesla valve. Um, and, and there we go. So what what's what's significant about this thing is or why why I'm why I'm bringing it up as a um, uh, in this conversation at all is that it's 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 visible how the structure of this valve, so I'm not sure how I can open image a new tab. There we go. So you can see by the structure of this thing. So this, there's the, there's openings on either side, and if something comes in uh, this 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 one side, <laughs> the left side, I think you're seeing the same left side. It can it it'll flow downstream and out pretty easily. No, wait, wait, wait. If something comes in the right side, it'll go to the left very easily. If something comes in the left side, it's going to get hung up. So, you know, this is, this is, this is, I, I would say this is a uh, taking the dimensions out, like this is a stripped down version of, an, an, of in some sense, that process that I was, uh, I'm saying, hey, we need to innovate on, um, we need to innovate at the level of our network structure. And the data dignity network structure is a sufficient network structure to do this this solving communication thing it's really having due process and so in some sense the uh the, the tesla valve is just a very like okay i can see how if i'm coming in the left i'm going to loop around and i'm going to get hung up so but it's 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 that much easier to come in on the right uh and then and then go right through and that 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 being being aware of your listening and how that's going is what that is to go with the stream of things because I'm not going to be resisting what you're saying. I'm connecting and I'm some this is and this is why it's called nonviolent communication because it's in it's in the history of Martin Luther King and Gandhi, and I I really see it as um, I I'm reclaiming you you are not like uh, oh, I think Abraham Lincoln said this. Uh, it, it, is not uh, making my enemies friends a way to defeat my enemies. You know, I don't have any enemies. I've, I've made them all friends. Like that's conversion. <laughs> so so uh, I'm, I'm gonna give you a little uh, rundown here. So, so this is, this is uh, the interaction node. It's very abstract in terms of, so here there are, so whatever the topic is, uh, and we just, you know, abortion, global warming, politics, you know, this is all the, uh, hum the human alignment problem. So we have view A and view B, and they're disagreeing. Now, view C is what I'm saying is always going to be possible. And it, and it really helps when it's actually a third party, because, you know, you, you can imagine listening to an argument, and you can kind of get a sense of what's going on. But, you know, not being in their shoes, it's a lot easier to see maybe how people are hung up. But so this, this view C, that's, that's, that's what it looks like when uh, people set, set aside the strategy and look at that, the shared humanity. And so there's, there's actually these emergent conversations in whatever, whatever domain, there's the possibility of, of these, this emergent synthesis. So I, I, let's just say view A is the thesis, view B the antithesis, and then view C is the, that synthesis. And so um, this, this skill of listening starts to show up in this network structure, you know, at the, and it's, it's very clear in some sense. So that in some sense, this view C, the, 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 the alignment between above and beyond the disagreement is, is, is more inclusive and relevant to the topic and to everyone who would be coming to this topic. So this is, this is like the page rank, if you, if you could imagine, so what if, what if I did a search result on Google and then you know, gives me the 10 top results, what would it look like if all of those you know, views had a conversation and they, you know, they, it was a really great facilitated conversation and then what would that search result be if, the, if that 
result was the synthesis of all the different views. And so my network structure here is, is how I'm saying that we get there. And that's, that's all, you know, I'm going to, I love, I love that this is night too. You know, this is how we're climbing the mountain together and getting to this thing called uh, top site rather than being drowned in complexity. So let me see. Oh yeah. So you, you, you can imagine these coming. Okay. I'm not sure where I'm in my presentation, but so you can imagine a whole topology of these different conversations and, um, and, and so this is, this is the approach to kind of elevating the dialogue. So let me see, I'm gonna pull back a second and see what I've got laid up here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is good. So, uh, it, you know, there, there's some sense in which, and th this is just a visualization of, of you know, it, it's a, it's, it's a non-hierarchical uh, in how these things are related. And yet there are these points of convergence and so this is the type of network structure that, uh, and going back to this, uh, if, if, we were, if we bring in again that data dignity aspect, um, that, 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 the, that the view C, that's gonna be the first search result uh, in whatever the topic is. And so there's also this incentive to be, you know, like, oh, I, I not only have, have this incentive to actually, for the workability of communication and that that here I am now living in a, um, you know, post domain name system uh, spot where I can, where I can't publish. This was the thing about uh, the Xanadu project where, and it, that, that's my second anecdote, where one of the reasons why I would say it didn't get off the ground is that it needed some sort of insight like this to start scaling. Otherwise, you get the same sort of, I'm going to go over to the New York Times and post my headlines on their headlines. So, so, so Beto, um, suppose you, you, have a, you have a big reputation. And so I'm quoting something of yours. And so on the, on the network, if I can comment anywhere, then, there, then there's that, there's that um, temptation to abuse that in terms of, I'm just going to like, you know, say whatever I want to say. I'm going to say Mosaic is awesome everywhere. <laughs> And so here, that that um, if, if I'm doing that, it's not forwarding the conversation, um, and people are going to disagree with it. That you know, there might be people in, incentivized actually uh, to 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 work with what I'm saying and 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 deal with that. But in terms of the the quality control, as it were, is some, is something that's that is provided by the structure in the same way that the the Tesla valve as the structure it prevents. Or, or impedes, rather, um, it impedes noise from going up to the top. And so, so there's a way in which this is this is the microcosm of that that function of top sight. That that outcome of top sight that I'm pointing to. And you know, I actually did not prepare uh, a lot of visual aids to to what to the further ground, let me check here. What have I got? Yeah, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave it at that, leave it at that for the, uh, for this part. Oh my gosh, okay, great, we've got some more people I did not see, hello, Liz. Hey, Wendy, Diane, thank you. So, um, in, in terms, <laughs> hey, I got some fans. Um, in terms of what's available in communication, uh, oh my gosh! And we only have I've only have four minutes. Um, there's this there's this notion that I want to get across um, is that there's well. I'm going to put it this way: It's best practices want to be practiced, and and I'm inspired by this this phrase: information wants to be free. You might have heard this, depending on your your background, but it's and and also information wants to be expensive because the right the right thing at the right time can make a big difference. And this is you know Google's value proposition. Um, 
but really what the world needs is these best practices to be implemented. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this up again. Uh, th this is this is. Hmm. I'm gonna read the parts that I think are relevant here. Um, and this is not edited. So, so for me, I'm going to both. Uh, so this, this, this book is a big ins inspiration to me. Uh, human beings are at their best, not when they are engaged in abstract reflection, but when they are intensely involved in changing the taken for granted everyday practices in some domain of their culture. And this is the different topics around which that structure that I was uh, talking about, it, it's housing them all. And so, and they call this making history. So we're disclosing new worlds by uh, grappling onto these anomalies. So for me, I'm sharing you, I'm sharing uh, the resolution of the disharmony that I ran into, you know, so long ago when I was like, oh, I, you know, I got to do something about this. So taking on that responsibility. So, so both objectivist critics and moral theorists focus our attention. I think I can actually. Uh, Am I sharing my screen right now? Okay, okay, all right. Okay, good, thank you. All right, then you've been looking at me the whole time. Um, both objectivist critics and moral therapists, theorists focus our attention on standards and procedures that are supposed to be universal and withdraw our attention from our customary life and anomalies we encounter within it. So uh, we are constant, quant, constant I'm running out of time. We are consequently drawn to abstract reasoning, applying objective standards to particular situations, or developing and adapting ourselves to universal procedures. Since these activities are not tied to the way of life that we share in our communities, they involve us not in practices that we share in building. Da, 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 da. So, the, uh, the we we lose the concrete way of experiencing concerns that hold us together. And so this, this way of experiencing concerns that hold us together, that is what is incentivized as well as uh, creating jobs, you know, creating a role, creating a demand for that skill of listening to be showing up, I would say everywhere. Uh, and in, the, in those conversations, uh, experiencing the shared humanity of our needs underneath where, where conflict is. And Tyler, I see that we are at time. Yeah, you got a couple of extra minutes if you want, if you want to finish up. There is okay. not a workshop at nine, so we're not running into another one real quick. Okay. Well, uh, since I don't know, I'm, hey, any questions? Request for clarification, feedback, Zoom bombing. <laughs> I, I can share one comment. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I really like the idea of how we are trying to do this alignment. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why I was mentioning RSS trackback is because when you have the page bank, you're only sending the data and sending a link, but we are not, you're not getting the feedback. RSS Trackback was trying to do that. So you can have a link back to the, mm -hmm. the information. And unfortunately, uh, the protocol that won was not RSS, was Twitter and mm -hmm. all the feeds. So we lost that part. But now I'm seeing, I, I don't know if you're familiar with ROM, the ROM, uh, yes. ROM, ROM research. Yes, and that, that one, has this ability to have the trackback, and we are going to start to have uh, the possibility to analyze the, the the feedback, and then probably we can do some alignment. Just sharing that. It, it are are you in, are you involved in the Rome Research Project? Uh, I, I, I'm just using it. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I I heard the we, and I was curious about that. Um, you know, I, I actually I I have a, a, my own accounts, and you know I. The first note I made was, does this allow for um, the tr micropayments for transclusion? So I mean, th th there's a way in which that that is uh, okay. that that you know. So so first off, it's great for discussion uh, to have to be able to be getting that feedback, and I think that's that's a lot. That's that's really what's missing that would have us start to scale that that uh, 
that mountain because instead of going full street, we got we actually have to deal with each other when we're getting feedback. And so having a, a place online to do that and do that in relation to the the topics, uh, I'm so I'm excited to hear that. And um, the the whole conversation around data dignity, uh, data security or privacy, you know, being able to um, give you a thank you. Thank you for dropping by. Um, that, that security is the other side of that, the coin from being able to do the micropayment aspect of it, right? And so, so in terms of fu like future proofing, um, whatever sort of platform that we're, we're building together, uh, I, 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 and, I, and, so, and since that tracking of things is, is uh, very robust, you know, having it being able to do so at that level of, of the feedback at the level of meaning, not just, you know, sharing signals yeah. about what I'm up to. Yeah. And, and I'm remembering a few things uh, I wanted to include here in terms of the, um, you know, the, so the term collective sense making is, is, is one of the outcomes of this, uh, of, of this sort of uh, inter interconnected uh, network in terms of the, the, the I, I'd say top site is, an outcome of collective sense making, and uh, for that collective sense making to happen, this is the way I, I like saying this: is that ha for you know for ideas to exist in the same sort of um, uh, you know so, so ownership of objects is great because it's very clear like where something is, but online this you know it's uh, the, the location of things you know, it's, it's at, it's at this website or that website, but it's not at this idea or that idea. So if, if ideas were in relation to each other within this space, uh, that that's really what I think that's sort of the, the baseline of what I think we need for, for really engaging in a, in a robust collective sense making object is uh, sense making environment is to have ideas as objects in the space in which we're interacting so that we can contribute to something that's going to stay in existence, and so that people can't avoid uh, the fact that certain ideas have been disproven, or that like that that this particular worldview has gotten this feedback. Well, what does it look like? What what does that person have to say about that feedback? And this goes into deeper differentiation about what works and what doesn't work for people. Cool. Thank you. I mean, I'm, I, just then I was kind of speaking to the recording more so than anything I thought you might want to hear. All right, I say let's wrap this up. Yeah, I think we're good. Um, Thanks for inviting me, Jeremy. You're welcome, Liz. Thanks for stopping by. Anything from anyone else? So, Thank you so much for spending the time here with me. Um, and if you, if you already know me, I love you. And if you don't, uh, <laughs> please feel free to get to know me. My my uh, contact info is on the uh, the the Brella. Uh, you know, it's on and well, I'm Jeremy Helm on most platforms. So you'll find me at proprioceive.com. That's Jeremy Helm online, and that'll be probably the search first search result for that. And uh, Thank you for helping me scratch the surface and, and get what I have to share out there. And thank you for your listening. Bye. Nice work. Bye-bye. Thank you, Bye. Jeremy. Bye, Jeremy. <laughs> Bye.